How's it going everybody? Benny Chris 12 here and today I'm going to make some arrowheads out of rebar. Now the interesting thing about rebar is you never really know what you're going to get because um, it's made out of kind of not really waste metal but you can get all different kinds like you can get high carbon and low carbon and then just some that aren't really good for making anything and the problem with this is, is you never know really which one you're going to get. That is if you're kind of just picking it up as you go. Um, I've never actually had to buy it, I've just kind of found it, so I don't know if you can buy specific kinds. Um, I normally just test it by putting it on the bench grinder and just generally guessing how many sparks come out, um, and that's how you can tell whether it's high carbon or low carbon. Okay, so you can see that this is a lot thinner and it's threaded, so I'm going to taper this down um, and make an arrowhead out of it, and then I'm going to thread the end so it will fit like this, and sorry, my camera's not focusing, but yeah. So we will make an arrowhead out of this. Also, I have this rock, which if you saw my previous video, then you know I was trying to identify this rock and I said I was gonna throw it in the forge next time I was forging. So I'm gonna show a clip of that as well. If you wanna go see the original video with all the tests I did on this rock, that link will be in the description. Anyway, let's go ahead and get that forge started. So I really hope the wind isn't getting in here too much. I don't know if I mentioned in a previous video, but I put a brake drum in here and that's to give me like a lot more concentrated heat. Um, and this wood is way too long, so I'm just gonna set it on top to burn off at first. But I'm gonna just fill this in with charcoal and that lovely charcoal dust that gets in your eyes. So essentially, I'm not going to be using tongs to pick this up. I'm just going to bury this in here, somewhat like that, and it's gonna come out to the forge but I have this rag which I'm going to wet down so I can actually just grab this piece by the end and I'll be wearing a glove as well but it will be wet so it won't be as hot and I'll be able to just hammer it and I won't have to use tongs so that will be kind of nice. Woo! Gets me every time. Okay, so let's talk for a second. So this is what I ended up with when I was done forging. I actually almost have the tip on there. Um, I didn't make it like really pointy tip because, you know, obviously I didn't want to break off when I was quenching it. So I'm gonna file that down. Um, and you'll notice that I have this really weird bend on it. Um, like I told you guys originally, I was just gonna forge it out and make it as thin as that arrowhead and then just, uh, What's that called? Put threads on it, yeah. Um, but if you guys didn't notice, I was working on a second project at the same time, and I was getting, it was really getting close to melting point. It almost turned liquid at one point. So I decided to just go ahead and chop this off, and I was going to finish it up on the bench grinder, which is a perfectly okay way to do it, and I can actually be a little bit more precise like that. So if for some reason you don't want to end up forging this down to the length that you need to um, put the threads on, you can just take it off and finish up on the bench grinder or belt sander, or even hand file it. So that's what I will be doing. Is my dog coming? No, she's just hitting on the door. <clears throat> that's what I'll be doing, and then I'll just clean it up a little and put a tip on it, but I'll show you guys that whole process. Also, as far as that rock went, I put it in there, and it melted, and it was everywhere. So I still don't know what that rock was. It may have been silicone, like people said, um, but it melted absolutely everywhere, and it was horrific and then there was like lava spewing up and I have burns all over my arms, my hair is singed. It's just terrifying. So don't throw rocks in the fire. This is the finished product. It's slightly uneven in some aspects where it slightly is overweighted on this side. So I'll have to take off a little bit more material. 
Well, other than that, I think it looks really cool. And I really like it. And this was actually my first arrowhead I've ever made. So all I did um, was just thread the end. I, like you guys saw, I was making it the same size as my reference um, arrowhead so that it would fit into this arrow and I actually got it off the arrowhead that I was referencing. I got it off of this. So I made the threads the same size and then just screwed it in as tight as it would go. So I'm gonna grab a bow and we're just gonna shoot out a log down there and just, you know, get a little test for it, see if it leans one way or the other. So I'm just going to be a few feet away shooting at this log. Um, there's a lot of factors going into this. One, this is a kid's bow. Two, this arrow is fletched with duct tape. Three, this arrowhead is very heavy and not very balanced. Anyway, yeah, let's just see how it goes. Nice. Pretty good. I don't know if those threads held. Nope, threads did not hold. So I got to work on those a little bit more. So there are really loud sirens in the background, but I'm still gonna just go ahead and shoot that water jug. I hand filed it down, um, so it is a lot tighter now. And you can actually see I have way too much space left over. So whenever you start getting close to the area where your threads are um, on the belt sander and stuff, I'd say switch to a hand file so you can get a way tighter fit. So it went all the way through into the dirt, so I just cleaned it off. Anyway, that's all I got today. Hopefully I can make it some of these that are a lot better than this one, but this one for a first attempt, it's really nice actually. I really like it and it just looks cool. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.